So this is a short video to just recall the idea of lexical scoping, which is something that you're already familiar with and that we've um, talked a bit about when we introduced the idea of uh, nested definitions. Um, but now I want to give a bit more formal names to things. So the idea of a lexical scoping is um, is common in basically all programming languages you've ever used. Um, the opposite of lexical scoping is uh, dynamic scoping, which we'll cover in the next few slides. Um, but lexical scoping, as you know, is basically the idea that uh, whenever you have a variable x or y, um, the value of that variable is obtained from the closest, closest definition, nearest definition, if you will, um, of that same name, of that same variable. So in this case, x refers to this x uh, and not any x outside this function. Y refers to this Y and not any Y outside of this function. And this is a very important property because it allows you to just look at a piece of code and you, you have all the information there. Um, where this function is called does not depend, you know, the value of X or the value of Y does not depend on where you call this function. It, X always refers to this X and Y always, always refers to this Y. So similarly here, um, in this expression, when I talk about X, I mean the closest definition, which is this one, and not um, this X, right? Because this X is private to F, and therefore hidden from uh, this piece of code. So we can, we don't need to look at the inside of F to know whether X, uh, whether this X refers to um, this definition or not, right? So th again, this idea of local reasoning, very, very important to have some kind of modular analysis or meaning of programs, right? Otherwise, it would be very unwieldy to think about this program, right? Because you wouldn't know whether it, this x refers to this x or not, would depend on, if it depends on the context, then it becomes really crazy, as we will see in the next few slides. Um, okay, so then let's just do a recap on names. So binding, as you know, is just uh, what we say whenever we have a, a variable or an association between a, a value and a variable. In this case, this is a binding. Um, and the scope of a binding is the text where the, basically what code refers to that variable. So the scope of this X is the rest of the body of this function, right? That, that is what is known as the scope of this binding, I'm sorry. Uh, so the scope of this binding is the code that follows. Right, so in this case, X is visible here and here, uh, but invisible upwards. Um, and the idea of uh, lexical scoping sometimes is also known as uh, static scoping. And it just, uh, whenever you see static in, in the realm of programming language, that means without running the code, static. So if you think about static analysis of programs, that means how can you analyze a program without running it, uh, whereas dynamic, by opposition refers to uh, to a property where to do something you need to run it. So in this case, dynamic scoping uh, is a, is a form of scoping that requires execution. So let's introduce dynamic scoping. The idea um, actually started as a bug in uh, Lisp one point zero. The original Lisp Lisp is the ins the ancestor of uh, Racket. So it's really the where where this idea of programming functional programming language with lots of parentheses comes from. Um, and um, there was a bug in the implementation. The effect of it was that was essentially dynamic scoping, which means um, when you call f, f refers to the closest variable to the code. So in this case, sorry, not the closest definition but it depends on the closest where you're calling it. So if you have f and you define a variable x, uh, let's say here, so this function is returns x, right? Um, and this just means that it works, basically your functions don't even need parameters because all, all every variable that you use inside a function is a parameter. So you can think of all functions as open in a way, right? Uh, what that means is if you call f, you return x, so that means whatever x exists at the point of execution. So if you were to call f here, 
because you have x to be 20, then f would return 20, right? Because f is returning x. Okay. So that's that's what dynamic is. Um, why is it useful? Actually, we will see later in the in the course uh, a very useful way. Um, dynamic scoping can be quite useful when you think about configuration, like global configuration, globals basically. Whenever you have to have a notion, wh whenever you want to have a notion of global variables that you want to still be able to control what they refer. So maybe they're global, but you still want to define like an object that contains all these global variables and you might want to flip them if you want to test or something like that. Um, those in record are known as parameters and they, there's a, there's a point, there's a place uh, for dynamic scoping as well as we will see in this, in this course. But for now it's just to know the difference. So again, to recap, uh, when you have um, dynamic scoping, when you call X, X depend on, depends on uh, the execution in the sense that to know X, you need to know what is the closest in the point of call. So when you're calling function F, then you look up for it in the caller, uh, in the caller's context where is X defined to know the value of X. You can think of it like implicit globals. Um, so this is just an example uh, to kind of disambiguate. One thing you can do, you can annotate x to become x of g of x. Oops. Um, g of i. So when you have this function, what you're really doing is x of x, g of i, and so on. So if you make all variables different, then what is x becomes pretty obvious, right? Um, so in this case. Um, this is an interesting point you might not, not be aware of racket, which is when you define a function, uh, you're not loading the value of, of x. Um, the value of x is, is actually refers, in this case, it refers to the outer scope, right? Because it's, x is not defined here. So actually in racket, this is a valid program. And uh, when you call g, it's going to be 10, which is interesting. And this is something that we're going to implement um, because if you call it, so basically the way it looks up is a bit dynamic in a way, but you can still think about it or you can reason about it in a modular way because it, this means, you know, if it's not um, defined in, in, it does not depend on when you, where you call it. It really depends on where you define it, right? So what this is saying is that, okay, X is not in G, so it has to be in whatever is outside of G, right? but it doesn't have to be necessarily before, defined before. It's looked up when you execute it, right? But you can still only assign one X, so it's still fine, okay? It's just a matter whether it was defined or not upon calling it. And that's why you get an exception here and you don't get one here, okay? It's pretty simple. So I, I would just suggest that you try to run this exercise and, and play around with the definition to see how it affects uh, the outcome. So finally, let's go through um, this example where we are defining, as you've seen, um, we've seen this when we were creating variables dynamically, is this idea where, you know, when you create, we, we looked at the example of a factory, right? where uh, this is an example of a fact, like very close to the factory. So what you have is getter of X and what that does, it returns a Lambda that returns X. And now as we know, X depends, as we've seen, X refers to the parameter. Therefore, when I do instantiated with three, the internal state is set to three. So at creation time, uh, X is assigned to three and therefore it doesn't matter what outside uh, X is defined because get3 is still referring to that internal state that was captured. Okay, so in the next slide, we're gonna go through what is known as function closure or function values. Um, I'm gonna look at it a bit more detail. <clears throat> 